Good morning, good morning, good morning. How's everybody doing? It's Monday, yay, what a great day to get our week started off this morning. Hallelujah. Welcome in, everybody. Good to see y'all coming in already. Hey, Miss Shalonda, how you doing this morning, girl? Good to see you. Hey, Melody. Girl, I've been missing you a little bit. I know you're a busy lady but and travel a lot, but I've been missing you. I'm so glad to see you on this morning. Hey, L'Oreal, how are you doing this morning? Blessings to all of you. Good morning, Instagram. Good morning, Facebook. Good morning, YouTube. Hey, Victoria, I see you, girl, tag, uh, coming on in, uh, signing in over there on um, Instagram. So praise the Lord. Hey, Rebecca Spann, blessings to you. Hey, Nick, good morning to you. Wow, y'all, it's going to be an amazing week, amazing day, amazing moments in the presence of God. I'm just really excited to get this great week started. Miss Katie's going to be in here shortly. As you can see, I got her chair pulled up and waiting and ready for her. <laughs> So, I'm just waiting for all y'all to come on in now, okay? So, let's get the party started. It's going to be a Holy Ghost party, amen? And I want you, if you will, please, um, I would like for you to go ahead and start uh, liking, tagging, sharing, all of that good stuff, amen? Good morning, Brandy. Good to see you this morning. Blessings to you, all right? So, all right, I'm just waiting on uh, some more of y'all to drop some greetings uh, to me this morning. We're going to uh, get this party started, okay? Go ahead and start sharing. Let's go ahead and do that immediately. Every day when you come in, just go ahead and hit the share button. Share to your story. Share to your pages. Amen. Uh, share to some really great selective groups. If you know of some groups that you're a part of that would appreciate a ministry like this and an impartation like this, please, by all means, feel free to share. Don't share to, like, a buy, sell, trade type things. That's not the appropriate place, I don't think, to share it. And a lot of times they can get pretty upset with us about it so um but anyway thankfully i don't think really anybody does that anymore um uh, as far as our group but i do kind of throw it out there every now and then just as a reminder amen good morning angela good morning uh to all of you over there on instagram i see uh, it's, uh, it seems a little slow over there at the moment, but it's going to hop up. It's going to, uh, you know, shoot up and everybody come right on in. Amen. So good morning, Saitha. Blessings to you. Good morning, Tarsum. Blessings to you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God is so good, y'all. We're excited. Uh, today's going to be an amazing day, uh, you know, for various reasons. But I just tell you, God is so good. Um, uh, you know, I am i don't know. I just feel a little over the top with excitement this morning, which is not a bad thing. That's a great thing. Good morning, be a blessing. Welcome this morning. All right, you guys, go ahead, get those shares out, sharing the stories, pages, groups, tag some names. Please tag some names this morning. Please go ahead and hit those heart emoji and those wow emoji this morning. Uh, make sure you're interacting and engaging with us all throughout the broadcast as much as you possibly can. I know sometimes we're getting ready for work or we're, you know, kind of just walking around the house, whatever it is we're doing, drinking our coffee, or we could be driving to work. Sometimes people are driving and listening and we know that they can can't comment as much so those of you that can make sure you kind of just step it up a little bit today and uh, yeah throw some extras in there all right good morning Kiara blessings to you I love you thank you for the green hearts yes I'll take those fruitfulness and prosperity and fatness and you know a blessing all of that I love it amen green is a prosperity color y'all all right <laughs> okay I got some green on my arm but mm, you know I don't always show all that, but in the summertime, y'all just have to see it because, you know, spring and summer, I'm all about no sleeves. I don't let that stuff bother me. I don't let near bit of that bother me, all right? Uh, so don't let it bother you. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Some people don't want to bear their arms or whatever, but I do. I don't let none of that stuff bother me. I got over that a long time ago, you know? And um, yeah, so um, Jesus loves me and I love him and I'm okay with me and he's okay with me. <laughs> and he's just blessing me more and more. Well, hey there, Cindy Brown. Girl, where you been? I'm like, I am going to have to send my Cindy a message and say, like the Lord said to Adam, where art thou? <laughs> so I'm glad to see you on this morning, my friend. All right. <laughs> All right. Hey, Miss Lillian, how are you doing this morning? Hey, Carol Belongia, blessings to you. All right. All right. All right. And I see more people have joined us over on Instagram. All right. Let's do it. All of you on YouTube, make sure you like the video over there. Amen. And then as, uh, you know, as always, um, Instagrammers, you may direct message people and you can tag names over there. 
All right. <laughs> and uh, so, I, all right, I need my Facebook folk to step it up now. Y'all get the shares out. Y'all get the um, heart emoji and the wow emoji rolling over there because y'all already know it's going to be good. Anything from the Lord is going to be great. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> Amen. So y'all go ahead and help a sister out. Help the prophet out today. All right. So, I know you guys can see uh, my title this morning. We're still in, we're in the month of open portals, open doors, open windows, all of that stuff, okay? Um, I, I am going to give you the prophetic word again. Uh, I shared this yesterday, but the Lord has told me, he's like, I want you to hit this thing strong now all month long and um, make sure you're getting it out every day. So that's what I'm doing until he tells me otherwise. Uh, that's what I'm doing. So in just a moment, I'm going to go ahead and give you the prophetic word that the Lord gave me for the month of April. Today is the 8th of April. We are going to get into some things about new beginnings and where we stand in that. And I'm telling you, the Lord gave me a, a mini vision this morning, a brief like flash vision this morning. And I'm going to share that with you in just one moment. Good morning, Marita. No, Marita. Marita. I like, to, <laughs> I think she's okay with me doing that. <laughs> <laughs> I just met, um, uh, saw you recently in Arkansas, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, Jesse Joan. Blessings to you. Amen. All the way from Kenya. Look at there, y'all. Outside of the U.S., we're going around the world. Amen. Good morning, Rosalyn. Good morning, Karen Beeson Smith. I have missed you recently. Amen. I'm so glad to see my peoples coming on this morning. Hey, Bonnie, how are you doing this morning? Glory to God. Hallelujah. And uh, I think I see Miss Reese over on um, Instagram maybe watching this morning. So praise the Lord. Just super excited today, y'all. All right. So these amazing massive portals of heaven are open for us uh, this morning. Thank you, darling. <laughs> it's just the way I don't know. I just love your name. And I said, I want to see, can I roll my R's on her name? And I said, I think she'll appreciate that. Because it's just a way I like to connect with people personally. I don't just want y'all to be a little profile picture that I can barely see. And I don't want you to be a, a, a link name. I don't. You are you are people. You are God's peoples. And you're my peoples. And I love connecting with people. Hey, Melissa. How you doing? Hey, Kimberly. I got to meet Kimberly in person in Arkansas. Um... Uh, this past month. I can't believe it's already been like almost a month and a half. I'm like, Lord, where does the time go? It goes so fast because we're in Kairos, right? All right. So, and I know there's a lot going on today. I know there's a lot, but you're going to hear the word Lord this morning. You're going to hear the word today. And I am going to keep your, your help. Um, I'm going to do my part in the kingdom of God to help you stay focused on Everything God has. Good morning, Victoria McComas, I think is how to pronounce your last name. Thank you for joining us. I'm just happy to see all y'all today. Hallelujah. If you're new to watching us, please let me know. I want to get to know you better. And let me know where you're watching from. Amen. All right, so let's do a massive countdown for our big share so that everybody that's on already will hit that share button and do it right now. Are you ready? Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Blast off. Hit that share button and then uh, type in the title this morning, Portals of Solid New Beginnings. Open Portals of Solid New Beginnings. There may be a lot of the titles of my um, uh, descriptive uh, titles uh, for our broadcast that will have either the, the word portal, portals, doors, open portals. There may be an excessive amount of titles that include those kinds of words in them this month. Just thought I would let you know that. All right, so while you guys are sharing and tagging and uh, typing in the title, please, Columbus, Ohio, awesome. So welcome this morning. Hey, Miss Christina Winkles. Looks like all my Arkansas people are tuning in this morning. Thank y'all so much. Y'all know how much I love you, right? All right, so here we go. Um, I want to I want to give you the prophetic word. This is the word the Lord spoke to me for the month. And different, you know, prophets will hear different things throughout the month. Not every prophet prophesies the same thing. It may have a running thread among, you know, maybe certain ones, kind of in the same uh, circle or the flow of uh, like like you know like minded type prophetic release. But it it doesn't matter. It doesn't mean that someone who's prophesying something different is wrong. 
and you're right or you're wrong and they're right. No, because God has different kinds of prophets. Not all prophets prophesy the same. They don't even have the same style, personality, none of that. But the whole point is whatever the Lord is saying to the prophet, I don't believe it will ever be contradictory to what God is saying and doing in that time. But it may just be a different facet of it. I'm not even going to charge y'all for that apostolic training right there. I'm not even going to charge y'all. <laughs> no, charge y'all for anything anyway. But I just want you to know, you got to understand this because people be like, oh, that ain't well, now, there are some prophets that may not be prophesying what the word of the Lord is saying, okay? They may be kind of off and in the doom and the gloom and the despair and everything's going to crash and we all going to die and Jesus is coming with the first load. I don't know, but I just tell you right now, I'm going to stay in the vein the Lord is giving me to flow in, okay? And I know, I know my relationship with the Lord, so I know I'm hearing some accurate things from him and I just want to share that with you and give him all the glory for all that's going to be accomplished as a result of it. Amen? All right, prophecy for the month of April. April will be a month of supernatural landslides. Supernatural landslides. Exactly, L'Oreal. We prophesy in part. We see in part. We know in part. We prophesy in part. But the day is coming. We ain't going to do all that in part. We're going to do it in the fullness. Amen? Hallelujah. And I believe that comes with more and greater revelation on our part of the fullness of Christ and the finished work. And uh, he unfolds even more and begins to reveal even more facets of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Amen. So April will be a month of supernatural landslides. Uh, you know, when I think of a landslide, I'm not just only thinking of avalanche type things breaking loose and just covering the earth. But have you ever, um, you know, I know y'all have, you got kids, whatever, you've been to a baseball game or or you've watched it on TV, sports or something with baseball games and how they come sliding into home plate. This is some of the part I see about landsliding. It's not just what's just flowing through the portal to take over us, but I see us as individuals coming in, sliding into the home plate with the completion and the fullness, the overflow the wealth, the blessing, the prosperity, the total package of everything God is saying to us. Even right now, see 36, 11, and it always takes me to Job 36 and 11. Hallelujah. That, if they, and y'all know if is only if you haven't done it, then you put the if there, right? But if you are doing this, watch this. Since I obey him and serve him, I shall and will spend my days in prosperity and my years in pleasure. Okay? It could be a big if if you're not doing it. But if you are already doing it, you really don't have to use the word if there. Even though it's worded, I think there's probably other translations. But in the King James, it, it, it words it as if they obey me. I'm sure there's a, there are translations that probably say since they obey me and serve me. A lot of times Amplified Classic will use the word since. Or it will give both options of if or in parentheses since they obey me and serve me. All right. Now I would have to go there to pull it up at the moment. But what I'm trying to tell you is, is if you are already practicing in your life, obeying and serving the Lord, it's not an if that this is going to happen. It's going to be because since you are willing and obedient, you'll eat the good of the land. Since you obey him and serve him, you shall spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. And that is not based on what's going on around you. It's based on what that word says to you and the revelation thereof. Because God doesn't lie. And God doesn't give his word according to situational, search, circumstantial, or conditional things that are going on in, 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 the, in the world. I need somebody to shout with me this morning, okay? Because, uh, you say, why are you pounding? I don't know. I just felt a surge in the spirit. Because, um, you know, we got it's time for us to speak up and speak out and even speak contrary to what's trying to be shoved down our throat in this outside system. And it's, uh, you know, I, I'm going to tell you, I don't prophesy according to the circumstances and the situations and the conditions and all the evil reports and the things that are going out and all the fear monging that's going on even about today. Even about today, later on with this uh, e eclipse. 
No, we're here to prophesy the word of hope to the people of God. We are not fear mongers here. We are faith mongers here. We are among faith. We operate in faith. And in fact, we operate in supernatural faith. Somebody type that in the comments. I operate in supernatural God kind of faith. That's where I operate in. I'm not receiving the evil report of this world. I am not oblivious. I am not in denial about it. But I am going to deny its right to speak anything to me other than what the word of God speaks to me. I think everybody, that's right, everybody needs to shout this morning, hallelujah, because, um, you know, we're operating in supernatural faith. I'm going to show you about what the number eight really represents here this morning on this uh, fourth month on the eighth day of 2024. Because it don't, it don't mean just a new beginning. Let me tell you, anybody can have a new beginning, but are we having a new, solid, supernatural beginning? What kind of new beginning are you having? Are you having one that is from ground zero, ain't got nothing, but I got to start over some kind of way? No, not as a, not as a believer, you're not. No, everything has been reset in your life, hallelujah, through the finished work of Christ for God's original intent and purpose and plan in your life. I'm fixing to share with you a, a, a brief and flash vision that I had this morning. It, it was interesting to me, all right? Very interesting to me. Now, I'm going to go to the number eight in, in Grace and Torah and give you some prophetic meaning concerning this. Um, because so many do not understand. Because most people think that a new beginning is starting all over with nothing. That is not biblical. Not starting all over. No. You're starting off having a new beginning. Moving into new territory with more than you've ever had before. I need somebody to type that up in there this morning. I'm starting over with more than I've ever had before. This new beginning in my life, this new beginning in my life and your life is not, well, well, praise God, we survived it. Let's try to start over with nothing. No, no, no. God says, I restore the years. And I used this verse yesterday. I restore the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, the palmer worm, and the caterpillar. Hallelujah. And he says that I will cause your threshing floors to be full of wheat and your vats, all your containers, everything about your life that has, uh, has capacity in it or on it or or through it i'm telling you right now it's going to be overflowing with wine and with oil with corn with provision with prosperity with abundance with overflow come on somebody in the total life i'm telling you right now i i've got more now than i've ever had I've had more challenges that I can shake a stick at. But I can tell you right now, I sit here with more than I've ever had before. Yeah, I lost some stuff. Yeah, some stuff got away from me over the years. But I'm, I'm getting it all back now. That's my new beginning. It's all coming back. It's all coming back in fullness. It's also all coming back with added and accrued interest and increase to it. There's an accumulation of things now in my life. Glory to God that years ago that whole seasons would bypass me things would get away from me get around me i didn't even know things were for me sometimes and i just had to come into a greater revelation of la brusa kataya in the word of god hallelujah that i'm not without and he withholds no good thing from me he don't steal kill or rob anything from me any loss in my life is not 
from the Lord because God is a giver. He's not a taker. Come on, somebody. You better grab hold of this. And I'm telling you, don't come in with me with that. Uh, well, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away. But if the Lord takes anything away, he takes away what was not meant for me in my life. He takes away what is evil or perverted or distorted or sinful. Yes, he does subtract those things. But I that doesn't really become a loss for me. That actually is a gain for me because God is taking off the weight and the sin that would so easily beset me because he doesn't want anything, hallelujah, attached to me that is not a victory, a breakthrough, of righteousness, of peace, of joy, of blessing, come on, of peace and fruitfulness and protection, hallelujah, and fatness and, and uh, the blessing of the Lord that makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. So there's these open portals of solid new beginnings. Solid new beginnings. And I am going to uh, pull up and give you some definition. And then I want to share with you this brief, very quick flash vision the Lord gave me this morning. I felt like it seemed like it just came out of nowhere. But I will tell you in just a moment, it came straight out of the supernatural. And I'm talking about God's supernatural, Yahweh, Yeshua. I'm telling you right now, El Shaddai, El Elyon, and Elohim. It came out of God's supernatural realm. All right, here we go. Let's go to the number eight here. And um, in, the, uh, in the Hebrew, what it means, it literally means to make fat. The literal meaning of the number eight in the Hebrew is, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Uh, to make fat. It's new beginnings, not just complete like seven, but satiate, in other words, saturated. Now, seven is a completion, and uh, uh, the end of a thing, of uh, bringing into a ripe harvest. It's a number of perfection and completion. But when you, when you, uh, go into eight, it has come full circle but I'm going to tell you what the pictographic meaning of the number eight in the Hebrew is infinity sign. It's an infinity sign. That means it's perpetually at all times from beginning to end before and after. That's what you, it, 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 it doesn't, there's no interruption to it. I said, there's no interruption to it. I, I, I really, really would love to see the people of God get the revelation that there's no interruption to the flow of God's supernatural. No interruption to that. No interruption to that. No interruption without hindrance, without interruption. I didn't say there might be a challenge to it, but I will tell you this, no interruption. I think we're given too much power and authority if we give any to the enemy. We're given too much advertisement and uh, and we're marketing for the enemy because we we give this uh I don't know. We we give this picture to people that he like he has power over us. That he can just do whatever he wants to do. That he can just come in and wreak havoc anytime and do whatever he wants to do. But he does not have that authority and that power over you, nor over your life, unless you step back and allow him to do that. All right? No, you stand up and enforce his defeat by taking your authority over him, using your voice. Your creative tongue with life and death in it. You can create and fuel the power of the voice of the enemy or the the um yeah, the influence of the enemy that speaks into your mind with thoughts and words and things like that. You can by, by using your tongue of death, or you can counteract that. You can turn that thing in the opposite direction, get it off your life by using your tongue of life. Your, the tongue, whatever, whatever your tongue calls for, that's what will be created and come into your life. That's what will come. 
Whatever your tongue calls for, that's what will be created and come and show up in your life because death and life are in the power of the tongue. If you have never, ever um, read behind uh, Charles Capps, uh, he's gone home to be with the Lord. He was in the Word of Faith circles. But I can tell you this, he's got a book way back uh, uh, called uh, The Tongue, uh, The Tongue, The Creative Force. Tongue, the creative force. So the, the creative force within your physical body is your tongue. And it has the ability to create life or to create death. I'm telling you, whatever you call for with your tongue, whatever your tongue calls for, there's a creative anointing, whether it's the creative anointing of death or the creative anointing of life. And that's what's going to show up in your life. That's how powerful it is. Well, in the, in the number four, uh, prophetically, and we're in the fourth month, one of the, the uh, meanings of it is creation. I'm telling you, you are creating. We're in a month of creative miracles. We are in the month of creative miracles. And it will be every month from here on out if you'll use your tongue to create those miracles. I need the church to stand up and shout hallelujah this morning, all right? All right, so it literally means the number eight to, be, to make fat. New beginnings, not just complete like seven, but satiated. Yesterday morning, prime example, the glory of the Lord came in on the line and began to saturate. It started saturating me. I mean, to tell you, I was getting so drunk in the spirit. I could feel the holy laughter rising up. I, I, I just had to just start releasing it to the people because I said, if I don't, I'm going to get totally just snockered in the spirit, so saturated with this glory that I'm not even going to be able to get all this word out this morning, okay? All right? So um, um, this is what is happening in this time of new beginnings. Uh, new beginnings. I'm telling you, you you are in a new beginning Kairos time and season, especially right here in the month of April. The April showers, they're not bringing the May flowers. They're bringing the April uh, blessings, the April flower. What What is happening in April in sowing, you're also going to reap and sow, uh, reap uh, from sowing in the month of April. It's a simultaneous month. It's, a, it's an Amos 913 month. Okay, that while you, you, you know, uh, while you're sowing, you're reaping. While you're reaping, you're, you're sowing. It's just one continuous replenishment and perpetual flow that is happening in your life. Who will shout, I receive that. I receive that. All right. So it's literally to make fat, new beginnings, not just complete like seven, but by satiation or saturation. Totally becoming fat is having more than enough. It is full to overflowing. It moves from the natural to the supernatural. Boy, I feel the supernatural rising in here right now. It transcends natural time and space to the supernatural realm. Figuratively, eight takes one through a full cycle of seven and begins anew. Okay, the one day, Yom Ikad of creation. But it also, watch this. It also alludes to greater authority, meaning double fours, mm, double fours, double doors, equaling eight. Come on, somebody, equaling eight. It's the double blessing of authority, greater authority, double accountability, double holiness, a set apartness. It is everything is increasing is all I can tell you is everything is it that's why God says that it's, it's it's the it's the month of supernatural landslides and I gotta finish that for you all because I don't want to leave that incomplete uh it's massive movement of overwhelming victories will rise rapidly and overtake you with miracle manifestations miracle manifestations heavenly portals are open and freely flowing now while i'm in the vein of the double and i want katie to jump in in just a second i want to share with you this um uh, quick flash vision i have this morning all right i sat down and all of a sudden, clear as day, I slipped into a flash moment and I saw double doors and I saw them sw come swing <clears throat> wide open. 
And the Lord reminded me just about a week or so ago. Yeah, probably just a slightly over a week ago. I've been, I've started driving into uh, some new neighborhoods, just checking out homes and, and that kind of things. Cause there's some things in my spirit about a new home. And so, um, I, uh, drove into this one neighborhood that someone had told me about, and it's really, it's not really too far from where I live It's maybe, I don't know, five, seven minutes, something like that, maybe. And I go into this new neighborhood and, you know, uh, these homes weren't like super huge, but they were nice size. And, uh, but something that I noticed that I've not seen in a long time is that these, uh, several of these homes, they actually had double doors, but watch me now, watch me, watch me. That's not uncommon to see double doors on a big, nice home. Most of them will have glass in them or some of like, even with some of the, um, kind of like the country and the farmhouse style will have the double doors, but they're more narrow doors and they'll have almost like the window pane looking, uh, in them, you know, cause they'll have the wood frame, uh, framing out the, uh, the glass in the doors, but these were double solid doors. Honestly, I've not seen that in years. In fact, I think that was popular probably in the 70s. Am I right? Wasn't that popular in the 70s that these were double doors on homes? Because I know in Florida, you can still some, see some homes like that because people kind of like that retro style. But I can tell you right now, I've not seen that in years. And when, when I sat down this morning, the Lord showed me that in the realm of the spirit. The difference in these doors, not only being double, but these doors are solid. These doors are solid. And so the Lord was speaking to me about solid doors. All right, when we talk about the word massive, one some of the meanings of the word massive, massive, because the Lord said there's going to be massive movement in this month, all right? So one of the things that he said about massive is, if you look up the word massive, you'll see heavy, solid is one of the uh, synonym or words for massive, meanings of massive. Heavy, solid, it's not just large, it's solid, it's not just big, it's weighty. It's big and it's weighty. It's big. Yeah, Kimberly says that they have them there and they are coming back big. And I was just like, when I first look at them, I was like, mm, I'm not sure if I want that. You know, not quite sure. Because it always makes me think of like, even like the, the older churches, uh, like that um, have solid doors, you know, so they can be open wide. A lot of times used for weddings or if you, uh, and back in the day, uh, you didn't have like side ramps and all that stuff for, for, um, for uh, like wheelchair people or handicapped people coming to church. So you had to open wide the front doors, right? And so they'll have that solid piece of wood in the middle, right? Because to join the doors, right? And to, to interlock the doors uh, together. So I, I am just like, oh my gosh, I haven't seen this since I was basically, I guess I just hadn't paid attention maybe, and seen that since like the 70s. And I'm just like, isn't, isn't it amazing how so many things are coming back full circle? And we see this in the world system all the time. We see it with fashion trends. We see it with styles of homes. We see this, all right, styles, hair, uh, whatever that might look, makeup, uh, you know, techniques, that kind of thing. And so I was just like, mm, not sure. But when the Lord showed me that flash vision, I was like, yes, Holy Ghost. Now I know because the one thing that stood out to me in that neighborhood is the double solid doors, the double solid doors. All right. So it doesn't just have to do massive. Uh, one of the meanings of massive is heavy, solid, big, large, very large, gigantic. Uh, but it also it has, it's not just about size. It's about weight. That's what I want to get to you today. This is a solid new beginnings plural, that it's happening in your life, in this open portal, open door month, okay? Do not be alarmed by the darkness. Do not. Just be, be the one in Goshen who has light in their house because you are the chosen. You are the covenant people of God, all right? Exactly. You know, something that's not only just, it can be large, but if it's hollow, it don't have weight to it, but it also, it, it, it doesn't have, it doesn't, um, also, uh, what is this sound and volume? Uh, you know, it's not very soundproof. It's not very soundproof, right? So, you, you know, um, 
uh, it, actually in the home we're in right now, there's a lot of doors that are not real solid. You, you can hear, because you can hear everybody's conversation or whatever that might be. Mm -hmm. But I'm just telling you, <clears throat> there's something solid in, in this massive thing God is doing for us in these, in these new beginnings of being made fat, new beginnings reset to, um, you know, for uh, redemption, restoration, recompense, reward, all of those things, restitution, and overflowing prosperity and wealth. Wait, now look, now look, look, you're going to have to be able to operate in this supernatural faith, men and women of God, because of all the reports that are going out. I don't know what they're all trying to, uh, you know, the shenanigans they're about to pull out there, but I know one thing, I got the supernatural in here. I got the supernatural. I'm already set up. You're already set up through the supernatural. I tell you what you can do. You can shift and transcend all this mess that's being thrown out there. And I'm telling you, watch God elevate you and take you in and take you up at the same time with such uh, solidness that they'll be like, what the heck? How is that operating for her? How is that operating for him? Because we're over here and we're hiding behind all this stuff. We're scared to go out. We're scared to make a move. We're scared to do this. You know, we're so scared. We're out here hoarding, collecting, and trying. And there's a difference in preparation and hoarding and collecting because you got a spirit of fear on you because the world is throwing it out there at you. Okay? Let me tell you something. When God told people, his chosen people, to move, especially in the Old Testament, he didn't give them much time. Joshua, they had three days to get it all together and get out. God sent, um, told Moses to send the women into the house of the Egyptians and get all they could get. Tell them to go. Tell them I'll favor this people. You send them over there and tell them to borrow. It really, it, they, it really wasn't borrowing because God canceled that debt once they were coming out of there because, because it was theirs in the first place. It was theirs. It belonged to them in the first place. Well, I need you to know. Look at there. Double fours, double twos. I'm telling you, if God's not speaking, my name ain't Janet German. I'm telling you, this is the word of the Lord that opened portals of solid new begin. I'm telling you, this thing is solid. It's weighty. It's heavy. And I'm telling you, it can, can withstand. It can withstand anything that's thrown at it right now. You can bet your bottom dollar on that one, so to speak. That's just a figure of speech. But you can, I'm telling you, you can take it to the bank and back. You can take it into your prayer clause in the back. I'm broke. It's going to, what, what God is doing in this open portal season of these solid new beginnings, I'm talking about, you talk about things being reverted. They're being reverted back to the original setting. And I'm not going to go in that because I want her to jump in right now because I've already taken too much time. But the Lord even spoke to me about that yesterday, sitting in service. Divine reversal, causing things to revert back to. Um, probably technically, you're not supposed to say, uh, say it revert back to. But just, just most of us say that, but it's revert to, to revert to something is to go back to it. What, what was it originally? What was it in the beginning? What was the original settings for the people of God from God's perspective, even in the earth, not to hurry up and get out of here. That was not it. But to stand solid in this earth as the manifested sons of God and be the living example of everything he prophesied, mm -hmm. promised in his covenant and, and, and us live out the inheritance in the midst of the mess. So type that in. Say, I'm going to live it out in the midst of the mess. Go ahead, Katie, and join us this morning. Praise God. Mm -mm -mm, this is good. You know, with a lot of this stuff, we especially in the Christian, in the church world. We refer to God as our Father, but Amen. we don't live as children. Right, right. So true. We Really, we refer to God as our Father, but we do not, <clears throat> we do not live as children. Right. So the thing about being someone's child, now this is when... Jesus, hallelujah. Things are done rightly and in order okay right. because Amen. we can we see um the wrong side of this in the world we understand that maybe even some of you guys came from that Amen. 
And if you're living like this now, I think this is a great opportunity for you to start shifting it because we see the whole um, side of parenting where they treat their children as you owe me. Oh my goodness. For having you and raising you. Lord have mercy. Um, once you are legally an adult, out on your own, go figure it out. Okay? We see that. Um, especially in poor communities. Right. Right. And that's of all colors. Mm -hmm. So don't even take it there. But especially in poor communities, mm -hmm. you see that. Right. But biblically, that's not how this works. Biblically, when you are a child, you actually live by rights. Mm. Man, that's good. That's why you can start a new beginning Ooh. and not be on ground level. Oh, thank you, Lord. Because a real parent, okay, not, you know, we'll hear people use the term, uh, especially estranged children, we use the term, that's my sperm donor, that's my egg donor, right? Mm -hmm. Because there's no connection there. Right, right. You were it in the natural, but you, you aren't a parent, you aren't a father, you aren't a mother. Right. Okay. But when you're a true parent, a true father, a true mother, you equip your children. Mm -hmm. You are required by responsibility to ensure that their needs are met. Amen. Amen. And then by desire and by passion, you go above and beyond those needs. Yes. I want yes. you to have your wants. I That's want good. you to have your That's desires. Ooh, I want you to start having dreams and I want to know what those are so I can facilitate those dreams. Yes. That's a true parent. Yes. That's the way that really we were built to be because that is spiritual DNA. That's not natural DNA. Amen. Now they'll tell you, you know, your motherly instincts kick in. That's that's really not about nature. That's more so about spiritualism and the way that God designed us to be. Right. Right. It's created in your DNA, but it didn't come from science. It came from the creator. Amen. Amen. Okay. So that is why we can sit here and tell you that you were launching out into a new thing. Ooh, hallelujah. But you already have what you need for it. There you go. You already have the know-how. You already have the resources. You already have the connections. Hmm. Because you live as a child yeah. of God. Yes. I don't have to go figure this thing out because my father's already set it up in place. Mm -hmm. I can say that things are open to me. Because my father has set people in place to cause me to succeed in my future. Amen. So again, for some of you to grasp this, you're really going to have to let go of your natural thinking. You're going to have to let go of your natural understanding of even what a parent is. Right. That's good. Because it may be very different from how you were raised yes whether you were raised by a grandparent a parent maybe even the way that you have raised your children mm -hmm. one of the quickest ways to get us frustrated around how people handle children and that's from a newborn to a 30 something year old is to treat them as if you got to earn everything my lord you got to work for everything mm. You want this, you're going to have to. I love you because you listen to me. I love you because you do what I say the moment I say it. That's not a parent. Mm -mm. And you guys are going to have to understand that living, again, as a child of God, Means even if you don't get it right the first time, you know that you can go back to God and oh, say, yes, okay, give yes, me this blueprint my, again. My, 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 my. Thank you, Lord. That's what a true 
solid beginning is. Mm -hmm. You're walking out on a firm foundation that was already set for you. Yeah. You don't have to worry about him sending you out to figure it out on your own. Right, right. This is so good. While you were saying all that, I'm sitting here thinking, um, we have the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. The best, as God's people, we have the best of both worlds. In the world that we're living in, yeah, in the world we're living in, yeah, in the world where, because we create our world. We create our world, and it's going to be based on how you see yourself as a child, yeah, and also how you see yourself as a parent. Because in 99.9, .9, we replicate things. Yeah. We repeat what we came out of. And, and so that has to be shifted. And the, the super on the natural makes the natural transcend what has been in the natural into a higher supernatural realm. It's amazing what you can shift in your own life. Uh, it really is. Uh, you, you'll have to disconnect. You'll yeah. have to undo. Some things you'll have to utterly cast down and destroy. Yeah. Some things you'll have to unravel, untangle yourself from. Because if you don't, then you will not, you will not receive the best of what God is doing in this new beginnings, this solid new beginnings in your life. Uh, you do. You got to unlearn some things, Rosalyn. I did. I had to unlearn some things. I did. I had to unlearn a lot of things. Unlearn and then learn, have new learning experiences, or we say relearn, but really it's a new learning experience because when you uh, totally unlearn something, that means you've got to ed be educated in a different way. And I'm telling you, oh Lord, you and I have the best of both worlds. Let's seize the day. Let's seize the moment. Let's don't get caught up in the junk and the jargon. Everything that's coming down the pipeline, everything that's running through the news feed, whether it's on TV or whether it's on a media site, don't get hung. And some there's some news feeds coming from pulpits. Y'all need to uh, let it let it roll on past you. Just let it. I'm telling you, let it roll on past you. You don't have to agree with everything that's being said. I don't sit there and agree with everything that's being said. Sometimes you you even have to realize some things you're saying or preaching. I can't even agree with that. I got to change that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, and, and the one thing I know that, that was in my spirit a good bit yesterday was why are we trying to prove what's already been proven? Yeah. And to have to push to prove. Got to prove, 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 prove. And, and then get upset if everybody don't join up with that. Uh, uh, well, that's flesh. That ain't the spirit. That's flesh. So we've got to get a hold of what's in this spirit realm for me. What's in this solid new beginning for me? Um, I, I don't want to cheat myself another day. I don't want to, uh, I don't, I don't want to, uh, honestly, I love hearing everybody's testimony, but I want testimonies of my own too. Mm -hmm. I don't want, you know, I don't, I'm not one of those that wants to be on restrictions and watch everybody out in the street playing, but me, I want to be out in the middle of it. So I want to be right in the middle of this. So I don't want anybody trying to constrict me, restrict me, restrain me. Um, you know, um, I don't want nobody trying to shove me around like a bully, intimidating me. I'll come over to my side of the fence. No, yeah. no, I'm not doing that. You're not going to have that kind of influence on me because once you, uh, you know, receive thus saith the Lord and you get divine revelation that is true biblical revelation, yeah. that's not twisted revelation, Come on, somebody. I need the saints to help me right here. You, you're going to have to be solid in your faith, solid in what you believe. You can't be so easily persuaded because 
you know, it's coming across with great charisma and a lot of heated passion. You can't do that. You've got to know, what is the Holy Spirit saying to my spirit about this? Okay? God's over here telling me there's open portals of solid new beginnings for me. So I've, I've got to guard and protect not only what's coming out of my mouth, i got to guard my, the gate of my mind first because if I don't, that the soul is where you can be easily persuaded. Because, oh yeah, well, surely if they said it, it must be true. That must be the reality. No, not necessarily. So these things you're going to have to run through the filter of the Spirit and through the solid Word of God god and not allow you know you can't i don't laugh at everything mm -mm. i'm sorry i'm just gonna be honest i don't laugh at everything i don't because if i laugh at it i'm saying i'm in agreement with it because they try to be funny about getting it pushed down your throat and i'm not gonna do it i am not gonna do that uh, the, that's it linda hammett the bible says so to your to show yourself approved unto God, rightly dividing the word of truth. You can have right discernment and understand what is the literal, what is the spiritual application because in every word in this Bible and in every word that's released to you prophetically or through exhortation, let me tell you, there's a literal and there is a spiritual. Yeah. So don't try to shut down one to prove the other. I'm not going to do that. Not unless the Holy Ghost says, all right, this is correct. You need to shift over this way. All right. So um, I, I just, you know, I just felt like that, that really fits appropriately in there. Because we need to have the right revelation of things in our mind. We've got to have the right interpretation. And I'm telling you, the word will interpret itself. The word will interpret itself in your life. And, and, and when you get the right interpretation, not just a revelation, but ha you have to have the right interpretation. Thank you, Holy Ghost. You have to have the right interpretation of the revelation that you're receiving. You got to have the right interpretation. How does this interpret in my life? How does this? Hallelujah. Wow. There's some good stuff coming out here this morning. All right. So I, I, I tell you, that's right. There is a lot of things that do get twisted and contaminated. And you have to have, that's why one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit is discerning of spirits. Now, that don't mean you're just going around trying to pick out every demon and go against it. No. What that means is in really discerning what is right, what is not. Discernment. Wisdom is the ability to discern the difference. That's what the word of the Lord being a two-edged sword does. It, it cuts through. Dividing the son of the spirit, the soul, and the body. So you know which. And I do not eliminate either one of those positions, the spirit, the soul, or the body. I am not just the spirit alone. I am first and foremost the spirit. Yes, I am. I'm filled. I've been born again. I confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus, believed in my heart, and I am saved. I'm even continuing to be saved because the more that I grow, the more that I know, the more I mature and learn and receive by revelation and interpretation of things, then the more I grow and the more I mature. So I'm continually and perpetually coming into greater measures and facets and characteristics of that salvation package for my life. I think that makes good sense right there. I don't dismiss my soul. My soul is not my spirit. My spirit is not my soul. My body is not my mind. And my mind is not my body. But I will tell you right now, each one in their distinctive functions in my life make me one. Make me whole. Spirit, soul, body. Spirit, soul, and body. It's a total package deal. I'm not walking around here as a spirit with no mind and no physical parts. 
I'm not walking around here as a body with no spirit. That's not possible either because there's no life in you if all you are is a body. You got to have the breath of life. You got to have the blood flowing through your veins, but you got to have the 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 spirit is the life of a of a body, all right? But I'm also not a spirit and a body walking around here mindless. All my parts were put in in place to become one. Proceeding forth from my spirit. I'm just telling you right now. So no, uh, we got to whew, get hold of this fullness. That's the fullness. That's the completion of who we are so that we are not being robbed of anything else another day in our life. Not any new beginnings, not any blessings, not any opportunities, not any moments, uh, Kairos moments, God opportune moments. We're not being robbed of increase. We're not being robbed of our divine inheritance. We're not being robbed in any area of our life. Because when he remembered me, that means he put all my members back together so I can function as one new man in this earth. And I can go forth as the manifested sons of God. This was really good. Katie, I want you to, anything else you want to put in here, uh, I, I want you to make the closing remarks. And we're going to give you people an opportunity to sow this morning. And I don't want you guys to let these opportunities pass you by. I feel like there needs to be an awakening in the realm of giving and sowing right now. And this is not because anyone's trying to pull anything from you. But I tell you, it's time for an awakening there as well, that people will come alive in the realm of sowing and giving, amen, and, and, and see the harvest of God come forth in your life. There's no charge for anything God gives you. He says, freely you have received, now freely you give. No charge, no charge. It's all paid in full. But I tell you what, you can honor the Lord. You can give glory to God. You can thank God. You can connect yourself with an anointing that is upon the word as it goes forth. Hallelujah. Now, um, you know, there's no charge ever to receive it. But there is a cost to give it. There's a cost to give. You know, there's time. There's preparation. There's prayer. There's study of the word. To give a word, there has to be time. There is time. It is a form of work. It is not toiling, but to labor in the word, to spend that time in talking to the Lord, in fellowshipping with the Lord, in preparation to pour out a now word, a rhema word. Um, you know, um, uh, that, that costs something, you know. It, 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 all this don't automatically happen. Is, and, and so I want us to honor that and realize the solidity even of what is happening in here on a daily basis to release the word of the Lord, to have a now word from God. We could just get up here and read John 3, 16 and keep you shallow all the days of your life. Or we could just go, Jesus wept. But no, to, to, uh, to a centrally and foremost focus on hearing from the Lord. For a now word, a now word, a word that is a uh, is a word in due season, even for the weary or for people who are experiencing fear, anxiety, or people who are needing healing in their bodies. They're needing transformations in their homes, whatever that might look like. I just want you to understand that it's not just get up and hit the button. It's not men and women of God. This is time in the presence of God. This is leaning our ear in to hear from the Lord, to pour into the people of God. Amen. Amen. I so agree. I so agree. Amen. Amen. I so agree. I see some good comments, but I, I do. I so agree with this. So um, we're going to give you that opportunity in just a moment, but I want Katie to... Give any closing remarks if there's anything. I don't know. I kind of feel like she might have a little something else she needs to give us. I just, just you know, checking my spirit on that because I never want to rush her, rush myself, or rush anyone 
uh, we want to get this word to you because we know it's going to change and transform your life in Jesus' name. Amen. What else would you like to drop on us this morning before, as we close this morning? Praise God. Um, I'm good for now. You good for now? Yeah. Okay. All right. You sure? Yeah. Okay. Praise the Lord. That was so good what you were saying about the parenting thing. And it's amazing, I'll just say this, how God always brings us back around full circle and the cohesiveness in the spirit that is here. Uh, she's an amazing teacher of the word. I'm a teacher too, but it's different. I'm a preacher. I'm a prophet. I, 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 all three, four things is happening at one time. I'm wide open. And she takes that solid moment to just just go deep and break it. I like to say break it down. Uh, and, and when we say that, it takes sometimes with the magnitude what, what's being released from the apostolic and the prophetic at the moment, it takes that solid moment to settle down and start feeding it in, in, in bite-sized pieces to the people individually and how they can walk out of this live today and personally individually apply this to their life don't you think mm -hmm. i mean it's amazing you have an amazing gift i tell you you have an amazing gift katie to do that and that's a uh that's a strong anointing on your life and i'm so grateful and for those that don't know it this is my blood daughter this is my my uh only uh, daughter, only blood child that I have. I have so many. I have, I have an innumerable spiritual children, but she she happens to have be the double in in my life. She's my natural bloodline daughter, and she's my spiritual daughter. And um, it's just amazing how God is just moving in, and uh, uh, even seeing the uh, the apostolic and the prophetic gifting really starting to come forth in her life too. Um, I saw an amazing display of that this past week with her, that just the prophetic word in a particular live that we were on with a with a leadership group. And I mean, this girl was prophesying details. I mean, it was amazing. And so I'm very, very godly proud of her. And, and then she has one daughter and she's just coming up. I, Lord Jesus. She just out there, front front and center too. Very, very much what you see between the two of us, that, that double hitting on her. And she's only nine years old. So it's just, it is, it's coming from legacy. It even passed down through my own bloodline and my parents and grandparents and uncles and aunts and all of that stuff. That just It's just an amazing uh, spiritual bloodline. Spiritual bloodline. Glory to God. Wow. Well, I want you guys to get your seed ready. She's going to give you the links for that and give you give them another update on this thing. We got to get that situated maybe yeah, today. I just saw that pop up. Yeah. So, all right. So, go ahead and Katie's going to give you guys the links for giving and I want you to sow this morning. Amen. All right. So, you guys can head to JanetGermanMinistries.com and click on the Sow a Seed page. Now, the first button says sow a seed, and that takes you over to Givelify, where you can give uh, by card. It is a faith-based service, really easy to use. Um, the second option says sow via PayPal, and takes you to paypal.me forward slash J-G-M-I-N. Okay. Yeah. Um, and on either one of those platforms, you can designate your seed using the notes section that they provide. You can mail in your seed to P.O. Box uh, 1011, Bartow, Florida, 33831. And then for those of you who like to use Cash App, um, let me get through these and I'll explain some more. Right now, the ministry one is still unavailable. Uh, if you would like to send personal seeds, we have dollar sign Janet German and dollar sign Katie German. Okay, so if you typically use the ministry Cash App, that one's unavailable. You can still use PayPal. You can still mail in. Um, and you can use Givelify, um, which again, is just like using your card 
super easy. It's secure. Uh, like we tell you guys every day, it's a faith-based service. So um, it's, it's just a good option, mm -hmm. to be honest. It's a good option. Now, as far as PayPal, we couldn't do anything with it over the weekend. A lot of times their stuff just kind of pauses over the weekend for these um, like support centers and stuff like that. To I was gone for the majority of the weekend with a dance competition, so there wasn't much I could do to help her with getting this sorted. Now, like we did tell you guys, our cash app was not compromised. Amen. So and it wasn't hacked. So just as a thing, because that was kind of the first thing I think a lot of people assume when you say it's unavailable, they think, oh, it's been compromised. That was mm -mm, not the case. No. It wasn't compromised, wasn't hacked. But they have updated their policies and um, kind of how they handle business structures. So we're having to resubmit some information and get all of that verified right. and approved. And it takes time for all of that to be done. So just keep in mind, please don't send funds to the ministry cash app because um, we can't do anything with it. We can't send it back to you. We can't receive it. It just sits there. Uh, now with cash app policy, after so many days, they will cancel it and send it back to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we cannot do anything with that. Okay. So just to keep you safe. So you guys understand too that it's kind of like a hands off situation for us until it's resolved on their end. We cannot receive your funds and we can't even send it back to you if you're like, oh, hey, I didn't know. Right. Didn't see the message because we made the post on everything a few days ago. Um, we can't do anything with it. It just has to sit there until Cash App releases it back to you or they settle our account where we can receive the funds again. Right, yeah. Okay? So please just keep that in mind. Y'all know you have so many other options that are easy and they're secure options. Mm -hmm. um, and we will update you when all of that is sorted and up and running again. Yes, and we're hoping... Really soon here, yeah. Because I have know, spent like hours. Oh on the my phone gosh, with them. it's been crazy. So we're probably gonna have to get back on there today with them. So y'all pray for us to have a quick resolve on this yeah. because we have a lot of people who used the yeah. ministry cash app to sew. All right, but um, yeah. I promise you, if you will just go to that website and just choose, there are so many options you have. Other than that. Um, you can send it to our personal cash apps, you, you, you know, or if you want to choose to use, um, you know, the Givelify is a really easy one because it, it doesn't require you to have a cash app account yeah. or a PayPal account. It just, you, you just use your debit or your credit card. Yeah. All right. And then, um, of course, the PayPal is fine. There's nothing wrong with it. You've got PayPal you can use, or like we said, the personal cash apps. They are fine. There's nothing wrong. And just like she said, not to be redundant, but I know sometimes people kind of just, it's a lot. So uh, it can get past you and you forget about it, whatever. But um, do not use that dollar sign Janet German M I N cash app right now. Okay. Yeah. You can use the personal ones. There's no problem. It hasn't been hacked, just like she said. It's just a change in their policies, and we're having to send over all of our credentials to them, yeah. and we have done that. So we're waiting for their response and 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 the resolution, uh, uh, you know, or the solution for this. Yeah. And hopefully, you know, get they were trying to reroute us different ways with this, and we're like, mm mm, because mm -mm. <laughs> you know, it would end up being even double work. To do it the way they were trying to tell us to do it so we're hoping we can get this resolved so y'all pray for us to get it done quickly here so that can be back up and running for you all okay so we love you all we thank god for every single one of you and blessings to you for your continued support of this ministry and y'all we're running up on um uh, i tell you what of uh, 31 years complete of full-time service mm -hmm. come june uh but i you know i've been ministering for well over 31 years, uh, well over, more like 45 years or so. So I know, I don't know how that's possible because I'm only 25, but how it happened. So, okay, <laughs> just play.
playing with y'all. But anyway, I love you guys. We are so grateful for each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us. Hey, if you didn't hit the share button, please hit that share button right now. And thank you all for being such an amazing group of people every day when we come in and receiving and being a blessing to us in support, even by sewing and uh and as you guys very well know, that when you sow into this ministry, um, uh, uh, quite often it is going to be twice sown seed for you. Because we sow out of this ministry, we support other works and ministries and ministers and things and uh, things even in the school system, education system. There's a lot of things we support different uh, missions and uh, you know nonprofit. Um, uh, ministries of, uh, uh, you know, uh, there's an orphanage in Haiti that we support, uh, and there's other uh, nonprofit uh, groups and organizations that are doing a great work in the kingdom of God, and we're we're sowing into them as well. So I promise you, this is fertile soil, and you will receive an increased harvest off of it. You guys have an amazing day, and we'll see you back here tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern. Bye-bye, y'all.